helping humans uh, to prosper in uh, a particular niche. That is, not all uh, lines of organisms became intelligent, uh, developed a big brain like ours. Presumably, our ancestors did because they combined three things that each helped the other two. Uh, technological know-how. All humans build tools and extract uh, poisons and develop weapons uh, and manipulate their environment. Secondly, humans cooperate, not just with their blood relatives, that happens all over the animal kingdom. But cooperation between two people who are not genetically related, that is special to humans. Then the third thing I think is language. With language, I can share my knowledge, we can trade it, and we can negotiate agreements on how to cooperate. So I think those three co-evolved in the case of humans, and they made having a big brain, which is very expensive and clumsy in metabolic terms, uh, they made it pay off, made it a big brain worth its while. And your field is the development of language in children. So what have you discovered? Well, that children very early on don't just memorize what they hear from their parents, but they actively combine uh, words and uh, parts of words in ways that show that they must have abstracted a rule system, not just uh, imitation. Uh, I'm sure that any parent can remember examples of a child overextending a Portuguese regular rule to an irregular verb. Mm -hmm. So children already uh, are born with this, uh, you called it the instinct for language? Yes, I got that term from Darwin. Uh, he, uh, when he said, man has an instinctive tendency to speak as we see in the babble of our young children, while no child has an instinctive tendency to bake brew or write. <laughs> that gave me the title for the book. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the implications for education, for instance? Well, education in, in many ways is trying to get children to do what the brain is not very good at. The kinds of things that we evolved to do, you don't have to go to school for. You don't have to go to school to learn your, your native language. You don't have to go to school to recognize faces or to judge people or to cooperate with people. You have to go to school for just those things that our brain did not evolve to do. To read, to use uh, numbers bigger than three, to uh, do science, uh, to spell, uh, and so on. So we shouldn't think in education that if you simply put a group of children together, they will instinctively learn what they have to know in a complex society. There has to be some design of a curriculum to push the brain in directions that the brain doesn't ordinarily go. As a parent, as most parents, I think, I was worried, uh, how could I help my children to you know, learn more or be more intelligent? How really influential are parents in the education of children? Well, I think they're influential in the education of children. That is, a child, a parent sends a child to have skiing lessons or, uh, or French lessons uh, or um, uh, how to ride a bicycle, and that is necessary to learn those skills. What I think parents don't do is shape the intelligence or the personality of their children. I don't think parents make a child uh, uh, nice or nasty or anxious or confident. I think that comes partly from the genes, partly from sheer chance, just unpredictable, partly from the child interacting with their culture and their peer group. Um, th there's a lot of resistance to evolution, not only from the, for instance, the, the religious uh, right in the U.S., it's known for creationism, that kind of thing, mm. but also uh, on the other side, too, uh, intellectuals that uh, uh, resist the idea, for, inst for instance, of innate qualities, innate abilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you see that, that uh, resistance to, to... Well, I think it's because our value systems very much depend on a conception of human nature. And if you make a certain claim about human nature, that will challenge certain uh, political and, and moral and, uh, systems. For example, the uh, right wing believes that morality comes from our having an immortal soul, which has free will, which can choose good or evil, which survives the death of the body, and which will be rewarded or punished in an afterlife. Uh, if, instead, 
our uh, choices come from the wiring of the brain, which is a product of evolution and perceptual experience, you need a different rationale for why people should act morally. I think there is such a rationale. I don't think evolution suggests that people should be uh, selfish or violent or uh, immoral, but you have to think harder. You've, you've got, you can't just take it uh, from dogma. The political left often is uncomfortable with the idea that people have any innate structure, because if they do, then that opens the door to men being different from women, or rich people from poor people, or black people from white people, and they think, I think incorrectly, that political equality requires sameness, that everyone is identical to everyone else. Uh, in fact, I think political equality comes from the policy to treat people as individuals and not prejudge them based on what group they belong to, but that's a different political justification for equality as opposed to the belief that people in fact are identical. But there's also this um, uh, idea that uh, the theory of evolution is the law of the strongest, uh, oh, yeah. so social Darwinism uh, has this, you know, some people say when they hear about uh, 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 genetics, uh, Socio social biology, for instance, they make a link with uh, eugenics and Nazism. So what is there? Uh, this, um, what is ingrained in that resistance? Yes, well, I think people are, are 100 years out of date, uh, for one thing. The, for one thing, the theory of evolution does not predict that only the strongest survive. It can't, because if you've evolved to be strong and fierce and violent, well, so has every other member of your species, and you just get, it's going to be violence against violence. Sometimes that gets selected. Sometimes cooperation gets, gets selected, because if you have, as in the case of humans, people who can trade with each other, who can work together, then they, each one might end up better off than if they were both were competing and they would lose the equivalent amount. Also, however we evolved, whether we evolved to be violent or peaceful or some mixture, that doesn't give us a moral lesson on how we should behave. Uh, one shouldn't confuse is with ought, how, what our temptations are with how, what we ought to encourage or discourage. Those are the two fallacies. As an evolutionary psychologist, when you look at the news, when you see how, how um, some symbols or values are used, um, does it